How is the royal family dealing with the coronavirus? Plus, a royal insider goes inside Duchess Meghan's final engagement, and we reveal why Harry and Meghan really moved to Canada. We've got that plus so much more in today's Royally Us. Hello to our fellow royal lovers. I'm Christina. That's Carly. How's it going? Good. We just need to keep calm and carry on right now, I think. Seriously. So as much of the world, we are in self-quarantine, but that doesn't mean that we can't bring you the royal news because this is not only affecting us, it's affecting the world and, of course, the royals, right? Mm -hmm. It yeah. definitely is. Yeah. So like most people, we are recording from home. So how are you holding up, Carly? Pretty good right now. Just it's fun to focus on the royals in the midst of packing and self-quarantining. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. The baby's screaming downstairs, so I'm sorry if you hear that. <laughs> I've got my boyfriend in the bedroom, so you know. <laughs> We're all trying to get through this. So let's talk about the royals. So let's um, give us everybody our royal roundup of the week. As we know, um, the coronavirus pandemic is continuing to sweep the world and Buckingham Palace is definitely taking some precautions and has canceled some royal events for the Queen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, they announced yesterday that after she canceled a few events last week, you know, the Queen is 93. They want to take a lot of precautions. So while she is still holding audiences for people like the Prime Minister this week, she's going to head out um, Thursday to go quarantine at Windsor Castle and start her, her Easter break a little bit early. Yeah, so this is definitely going to affect the Easter services, right? Mm -hmm, it is. And it'll be, this is the second time ever that she's missed one of the, what's called a Maundy service, which is the Thursday before Easter. But, you know, the Queen just doesn't skip events. This is really the first time that she's ever had to cancel these events. Yeah, this is a big deal. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, we're canceling events all over the world. We're canceling sports. We're canceling schools. We're canceling, you know, day-to-day -day life pretty much. And the mm -hmm. Royals are, you know, they're just like us. They have to abide by the rules. They are, yeah, and they are ready to protect the Queen right now at all costs, and moving her from Buckingham Palace to way out in the countryside at Windsor seems like a really good idea. Definitely, but we we did see her out and about before, you know, this kind of wave of coronavirus really came crashing down. We did. We saw her at church this weekend. The Queen never misses church, uh, and we saw her at Buckingham Palace greeting people and also holding audiences last week, and a lot of the royals were actually out, and while they've They've definitely slowed down. They haven't self-isolated. So hopefully we see more of that as the week continues. I feel I feel like we definitely will. I feel like uh, the UK is a little bit behind us right now. And I think this is all just kind of starting to catch up to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this week, you know, really being fearful and everything set in. And, you know, Charles is 70. He's also someone who should be self-isolating. And he was out and about over the weekend. And we've got to keep, like everyone else, got to keep the airs healthy. Yeah, the royals are not immune. They are not, <laughs> definitely definitely yeah. not. Well, speaking of Charles and Camilla, they also had to cancel a big trip that they had planned, right? They did. They were going to go on a spring tour actually yesterday through March 25th. They were going to go to Bosnia and Cyprus. Prince Charles was going to start the tour alone, and he was going to um, go to a memorial for the to remember the Bosnian genocide. And then after that, he was going to be joined by Camilla, where they were going to meet with the people of Cyprus and do a lot of fun cultural activities. But, you know, that's just that's too much contact and no one should be traveling right now. So yeah, that trip definitely. is off. That trip is off. We don't know when it's going to be rescheduled for. Right. They, they haven't said yet. We don't. Even Buckingham Palace put Trooping the Color, which is a ceremony in June, in jeopardy. So we're at a time right now that's really unprecedented. You know, people aren't rescheduling things. They're they're putting them off all over the world. And these royal tours, it'll be really interesting to see when they finally resume. Really well. Like you said, Trooping the Colors is probably one of the biggest events of the year. And right. for that not to go down, we'll I see. I know. And then we also have Princess Beatrice's wedding in May. So we don't know if that's going to happen, too. Yeah. You know? No, and uh, that's been rescheduled twice, actually, because of her father, Prince Andrew's scandals. And now for a third time, I imagine she really just wants to walk down the aisle at this point. Um, and like a lot of other brides I know who have actually canceled their May weddings, maybe we'll see Beatrice, you know, marry Eduardo and then in a year hold a full ceremony. It was going to be a small ceremony anyways, not televised. So maybe if she can get a gathering of less than 10 people there, it'll happen, but well, TV. 
Yeah, definitely. So we also found out why Archie didn't go to the UK with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle for their last, you know, final hurrah. And it actually had to do with coronavirus as well, right? It did. Uh, they wanted to keep Archie safe while they were traveling during the beginning of this global pandemic. And it just goes to show tabloids are so hungry to say Meghan and Harry, but especially Meghan, are being really spiteful. They don't want the Queen to see Archie. They don't want, you know, Kate Middleton and Prince William's kids to all hang out together. No, they're concerned for their health and Archie's health. He's not even a year old, so they made the right choice. They definitely made the right choice. And they are actually hunkering down in Canada. We heard that, you know, they are um, doing their own self-quarantine, I'm sure, in a beautiful <laughs> a beautiful home in Vancouver Island. Yeah, that <laughs> might not look like our home. <laughs> um, and I've also heard that if they uh, find out over the next few days or weeks that they came into contact with someone who has coronavirus, they will, of course, test themselves and continue self-isolating. I'm sure. I mean, they were around so many people when they were out um, for all their final engagements. So you never know. Right. And I heard at Commonwealth Day that they were discouraging the royals from or really anyone there from shaking hands. But like you said, all of these gatherings were so big. There's so many reporters, so many people sitting in those church pews on Monday. It'll yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's continue our talk on Harry and Meghan because we are still reeling from their final appearances and we're actually getting an inside look at her at Meghan's final emotional appearance and this was not what I expected. So let's spill the royalty about this a little bit because um, Royal Insider Omid Scobie, who's been following the Royals for, you know, many, many years, mm -hmm. he was there for her final engagement and it was really emotional and he kind of... Um, he, he really did spill the tea about this one. He did. Um, I would encourage everyone to read this article. I, I was expecting, since there was, there was an audience of three people attending this last somewhat surprise engagement, you know, you expect the same old things. This is what she did. This is what Megan talked about. No. He really hit out at the royal family saying, this was a couple that wanted to work. They wanted to be with the queen. Other royals have part-time jobs and continue to be royals. I think the biggest bombshell was he said that the couple suffered so much and it would have been so much better if one or two family members had stepped in. You know, Omid really called out the lack of support in the royal family. And their motto is never complain, never explain. And he really explained everything that they could have done. Did. And I'm surprised because um, Omid, he actually worked for Us Weekly at one point. And so we've we've known him for quite some time, but like he's always very, I'm just going to report report things as it is, never like bringing any of the drama into it. So I wonder if they allowed him to kind of say what he said, because, you know, saying like, oh, if the Royals gave some support, maybe things would have been different. Like that's a bold statement. It really is. And I think it's, you know, a sign of things to come with Meghan and Harry, because now they can finally communicate in a way that isn't just going through the Royal Rota. So Omen put out a really important message for Harry and Meghan saying, we still want it. Remember, we still wanted to work for the Queen. Remember, we had absolutely no support from my brother, my dad, my grandmother, maybe despite what you've heard and other reports. Omid also pulled back the curtain and said that Meghan gave a tearful goodbye to her Buckingham Palace staff. You know, there have been a lot of reports saying Meghan doesn't like her staff. The staff was blindsided by Harry and Meghan leaving. So really, Omid was communicating what the couple can't really, you know, tweet out or Instagram themselves. He was saying, remember that they've loved these people and they're really, really sad to leave. Yeah, definitely. Well, Omid actually spoke out to Access Hollywood about being in the room with Megan. So let's take a look at this. It was a poignant event for Megan because it also marks her final royal engagement. It would have been the last time that she would have carried out official royal duties. And to be in Buckingham Palace, really the home or the heart of the Windsor family, uh, would have been a very sort of loaded moment for her. I watched her sort of carry out the work and it was only towards the end of the engagement with the students on their way to the Commonwealth service at Westminster Abbey that Megan was really able to sort of let her guard down and uh, the emotions free. Uh, it was actually a very tearful moment as she said goodbye to some of the aides that have worked closest to her for the past year or so and really sort of protected Harry and Meghan through some really difficult times. It was it was a tough moment, but I think also one that came with hope because, of course, Harry and Meghan are moving into a new chapter that will hopefully give them the life that they want. Oh, I wish we could have been there for that one. I know. 
to be a fly on the Buckingham Palace wall, honestly. Yeah. Well, now that they are back in Canada, you know, life is definitely going to look a lot different for the two of them. You know, they're not going to be in the public eye. We haven't seen them since they've been back. But, you know, we are actually learning a little bit more about why Harry decided to kind of take a step back. And it was pretty much for his family, right? Mm -hmm. And I saw your Us Weekly reporting, which was that Harry's, you know, always wanted to be normal. He was in the military for 10 years. He's more normal than the rest of the royal family. And he doesn't want Archie to have to live under the spotlight that he's been under his whole life. And while Harry and Meghan might not be able to escape that, you know, they want to give Archie the best possible chance to grow up as just a normal kid. Yeah. I mean, despite all their best efforts, he's not going to be a normal kid. <laughs> exactly. You cannot give your kid a title, but again, his great right. grandmother is still the queen. He's yeah. still in line to the throne you know he's cousins with the future king right. so yeah it's it'll be interesting to see how they try and you know maintain that sense of normalcy for Archie uh, he will definitely not grow up in a castle but maybe I mean a mansion could also look like a castle so we'll see I think he'll be okay but uh, you know another thing that's interesting is that you know we had reporting that he did leave for Canada because of the way that his family was treating Megan, which kind of mm -hmm. backs off of what Omid was saying, that if somebody kind of spoke up for them, maybe they would have stayed. So maybe, you know, maybe they weren't treating her as nicely as we had hoped, you know? Right, that she wasn't actually ever accepted and, you know, that she did her best to, to work really hard and find her place within the royal family. But, you know, they call themselves the firm. They, what a weird sort of family business to join. And when you when you don't have people backing you up, when you're saying, hey, I'm getting these racist and sexist attacks, you know, what are you supposed to do? It, it, it's not complaining about press attention. It's the fact that she received hundreds of thousands of death threats. And Harry, from the very beginning, has called on the palace and also members of the media to step up and, you know, really call it like it is. So now that they are, you know, thousands and thousands of miles apart, I would imagine that this feud between William and Harry is going to keep going strong for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I saw that Katie Nichols, a Vanity Fair reporter, said this is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. And certainly when you are fighting with a family member, putting 3,000 miles of distance between you will not do a lot. Uh, and as we saw at Commonwealth Day, Harry and William barely acknowledged each other. So it seems like the feud is still alive and well. I mean, Harry was the one to publicly acknowledge it in an ITV documentary in October. We have no idea how William responded to being publicly called out. Um, <laughs> Well, <laughs> probably well, yeah, and because they don't they don't ever want to complain or put the family business out there. But in instances like this, you know, a lot of personal details are leaking out, probably because they're not getting the support they need. Yeah. And with everything kind of being canceled in the next couple of months, who knows when Harry and Meghan will be going back to the UK. I know a couple uh, outlets reported that Archie will be going over there over the summer so he can see the Queen. But who knows, right? Right. And uh, last year, there it was a really big deal because Harry and Meghan did not go to Balmoral Castle with the Queen in Scotland, which is where she goes every summer. That was taken as a snub. And this was a really big olive branch, I think, to show that we still want to be a part of the royal family. We still really respect the Queen. So, yeah, we were supposed to see that summer visit. And I imagine some really cute photos on Instagram. But that's around the time um, after the Trooping the Colors. So we'll see what events are pushed back. And, you know, if the queen, who is one of the most vulnerable, is still in sort of self-isolation, which could take months. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so speaking of, you know, with the coronavirus canceling a lot of events and things like that, you know, you may run into the royals every now and then. Who knows? On your, uh, on your strolls through the park. Right. <laughs> When you, if you come in contact with the royal during these trying times, let's break it down how we should greet them. You know, let's break down the royal rules. Yeah. So what, what kind of measures have they been taking so far? So Prince Charles has been doing the Namaste greeting. Um, he's been greeting everyone. Yes, wonderful. Um, at greeting everyone like that, which is really wonderful to see that he's setting this example for not only other members of the royal family who do need to stop attending public events, um, but, you know, other people in Britain. It gave me some ideas, you know, you don't want to, if you don't want to do the elbow bump like Prince Harry is doing with Craig David, you can always give someone one of these. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And we have seen 
Um, the queen wearing gloves when she's done some investiture ceremonies, those are being put off for the next few weeks, but it was nice to see people taking, taking some precautions and now hopefully they start taking some distance. Definitely, definitely. So the coronavirus has forced the royals to actually make some history this week, right? Yeah. Because, what, this is the first time in how many years that they've canceled royal events? 68, I believe. And as Joe Little, who's the managing editor of uh, Majesty Magazine, said, this is completely uncharted territory. The Queen is not someone who ever cancels anything. In fact, she hasn't canceled anything. So, yeah, this is history making, canceling these royal events. So yeah. we're seeing a lot of a lot of changes, a lot of surprises, and a lot of history this yeah, week. Yeah, totally. Is there anything that's still on? I know that she's still going to have some one-on-one -on -one meetings with the prime minister, correct? Yes, and then she's meeting with um, a commander, and then she has one other meeting before she heads out on Thursday. Um, but for now, you know, there, there's nothing else on the docket and in her diary. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see what the royals do from their homes. I've seen reports that Harry and Meghan are really wanting to get involved in some way, whether that's an Instagram live or some way to communicate with people and really tell people to keep calm during these times. Um, we'll have to wait and see. I would love to see uh, Charles and Camilla, Kate and William get on Insta live. I would be yeah, <laughs> ready to sit down at 8 p.m. hear from the royals. Right. <laughs> concert like John Legend and Chrissy Teigen did. When you're on the street. <laughs> that, would be, that would be great. Or just a tour of Buckingham Palace or Kensington Palace. Oh my God. I would, I would definitely stay home for that. <laughs> totally. So before we wrap up, we of course have to check in with our pint-sized palace. And yes, they've been laying very low. But oh I did hear that there were some sightings that Kate was out with them doing some shopping. She was. Kate um, was out at Sainsbury's, which is a supermarket in the UK, and she was reportedly shopping for children's clothes. Once again, royals, just like us. This, like us. <laughs> this happens. And she was out with her three kids, George, Charlotte, and Louis. And the kids have actually been out of school for about two weeks now, because if you remember, um, George and Charlotte go to Thomas's Battersea, which is right in Kensington, and they were on school break for a week. And when they came back, some other kids had gone to Italy for a skiing trip. Italy, as we know, is under complete quarantine. So um, as other schools in the UK were shutting down, uh, Thomas's Battersea was, was also closed. So, you know, I'm sure there's a little homeschooling uh, that, you know, Kate's probably wrangling all three of them right now trying to trying to figure out what's on the lesson docket for today. Okay. Well, lambing can be one of those things, right? <laughs> Still had to Google that one, but yeah. <laughs> well, Carly, thank you so much. It's so good to see you from home. Thank you for doing it. Stay safe out there. Thank you. You too. Thank you. And everybody watching, stay safe as well. We will, of course, keep you updated every single week on everything going on with the Royals, which, you know, they may just be chilling at home, Netflix and chilling. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Who knows? If they're watching and they want to come on, we're ready. Yes, we'll be we ready. Call. Well, of course, for more Royals news, head on over to usmagazine.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.